The user interface really helps people navigate all the controls of the vehicle. And it has to be something that's easy to use and something that's intuitive and something that has all the robust features that you would expect in a modern electric vehicle. That effort alone is, is quite challenging and we needed some type of quick way to deploy that in their timeline. So Crank was the solution when it came to the embedded graphical user interface design and implementation of the software. Crank has really helped us streamline the development process by enabling us with tools like Storyboard, which consolidates all the information from the user interface, makes it really easy to change and modify, and really helps speed up the development cycle significantly. It's a multi-platform software solution that it was very agnostic to the hardware that you chose to implement the graphics. On top of that, they have the tool sets that made it very easy to not only design them in, but actually implement it for functionality. What we've created with Crank is something that's really intuitive for the driver, but gives us a lot of extra benefits to show the efficiency of the Aptera. Uh, things like how do you add range to your trip, things like how efficient are you really traveling, and navigation tools that would be really hard to implement with anyone else's software solution. Hi, my name's Luke. I work on the battery team here at Aptera. That includes testing and manufacturing and design and procurement, talking to suppliers, going to see other designs and architecting our whole battery system for the whole car. I think the biggest challenge is really trying to pack everything into such a small space and still deliver on all the other things you have to deliver for like high temperature, low temperature, um, performance in all kinds of scenarios and still make the car fun to drive. I mean, that cell has to make you fly off the starting line as well as get you 400 miles on a single charge. We're using the latest cell technology. We're using the most like system level integration that we can to get all that weight out of there. It runs at 400 volts, so tons of power. It's actively cooled for high performance and I need to make it lightweight and inexpensive but also strong for the vehicle's frame. This battery system, I mean, we have this hydro-formed aluminum, which is a process where you take huge amounts of water and you like shove this aluminum into the form that you like. Um, and we can use that really cool process to create cooling channels in a sheet of aluminum in a really like manufacturable for high volume kind of way, um, also very inexpensive and high precision. And that allows us to take like multiple connectors and pumps out of the system completely. So huge weight savings there on a previous design. And you know, using the cell chemistries that are available now, the cells themselves have gotten like two or three times more power dense. And at the same time, the cost has come down a huge amount. So we are really at an inflection point in, I guess what, what I see as the battery timeline. Of like when does this make sense to make a car? I think it's now. I've worked on a couple of projects with large volume production, um, so I can bring that kind of expertise on how do we get from quantity five to quantity 10,000? You know, what, what do we need to do in order to get from there to there? Because it's not easy. How does Aptera get 40 miles per day just from the sun? Well, here's how. First, you have to have a child's version of a sun. The Aptera. I'm an engineer, I'm an artist. The solar panels on the Aptera produce about 700 watts peak power. Now, over the period of a day, it'll generate about 4,000 watt hours. But because the Aptera is so efficient, it only uses about 100 watt hours per mile. And crossing out the units, we're left with miles, and so you see the answer is 40 miles. Now, that's just solar range. Some Apteris can go up to 1,000 miles. But because the Aptera is so efficient, and because it only uses 100 watt hours per mile, its panels can provide enough energy, for kilowatt hours, to drive about 40 miles per day. So if you want to see how much free power you can get from your Aptera at your location, check out our solar calculator on our website at aptera.us. My name is Greg and I'm the Composites Lead at Aptera. I'm Anusha. I'm a mechanical engineer on the Body and White team. 
The meaning of body in white. Historically, at the end of the production line, they dip the bodies of cars in, in white, you know, maybe an old Ford factory or something. Body in white on a normal looking car is the outside coverings that you can see, but it's also the frame on the inside that you normally can't see. But then on the Aptera car, you can see the body in white. Like it's the outside. Like if you had tried to draw like a circle around it, you just draw the whole car basically. I worked at two previous aerospace companies all in composite structures. To be lightweight is to be structurally efficient. Um, a lot of times that points to a, a composite structure. Composites allow you to put the strength in the exact directions you need them. So we know how the car will be loaded when someone's driving it, when someone's cornering, when someone's braking. We know all of these sorts of situations that the car needs to endure. So we don't need to put metal in blanketly to make sure it's strong overall, we can put them in specific areas in specific directions that will remove some of the weight that a metal would add unnecessarily. The fact that the body in white is not even hidden is already a big efficiency. There's nothing covering it. There's not extra weight covering it. There's not extra parts to make. The whole design really only works with efficiency. A lot of body in white is making sure that we are as efficient as we can possibly be with what strength we need that the car has to handle. That's why the body white is primarily made of composites as well, because it is the most efficient method of getting strength for a certain amount of weight. And working on the floor sills, they're one of those structural body and white parts. They connect the, the bottom of the tub with the belly pan. Engineering as a word has a Latin root, even though we think it's about engines. Um, in Spanish or in Latin, it's about ingenuity. So I, I like to come to work and solve problems. Having a defense or aerospace background can help when designing the Aptera because it can inform us a lot about standardization with composite materials. Composites were basically invented for the aerospace field and they're very rarely used in everyday products. The quality that aerospace requires, whether it's composites or not, is very high and that leads to very precise and accurate, repeatable production. And that is very needed with Aptera as we move towards making thousands of cars. <laughs> My name is Brian Homsang Perdit. I'm the uh, chassis lead right now for all the suspension development at Aptera. Well, the biggest changes so far have happened in the rear suspension. We actually got rid of the swing arm design that we had previously, and we've moved to a double trailing link, which really helps out the rear ride quality as well as predictability during acceleration and braking. Previously, it was it was set up to where the vehicle during acceleration uh, actually had a little bit of lift to the rear of the car. Uh, and now we, we have it set up to where it's, it's very predictable. You get a very normal vehicle response, something you'd be familiar with with any other kind of vehicle. Uh, for the average consumer, right, if you go over a bump in the car, jumps up really aggressively or you don't feel it at all, those are things that people will perceive, uh, maybe not knowing exactly how to explain that. Spring rates, damping rates, and even air pressure in the tires affects those things greatly. And so for me, one of the biggest things is making sure that the ride rates for the vehicle are as someone would expect them to be at a, in a vehicle of that weight. Um, the other thing would be how does the steering respond in the car? How does the, uh, the brake pedal feel whenever you're applying the brakes to come to a stop? So during track days, for example, we'll take the vehicle out and uh, go up and down the track. You know, there's, there's acceleration testing, there's braking testing, and uh, some of the big things that we get back from that is what does the vehicle do as a response to that, whether it pitches forward or pitches backwards during acceleration or braking, whatever, whatever the result is, we have the ability to understand that data and apply that to what do our new models need to look like. Uh, so what I think is unique about Aptera is the fact that we're so efficiency focused, right? The, a lot of other companies that I've worked for either have, let's say, cost on their minds or 
what is the uh, the fastest we can make the vehicle. But really, I'm I'm so pleasantly surprised by the co-CEO's uh, mentality and focus on efficiency that we are able to kind of focus our resources to kind of all get together on the same mutual goal of what is the most range we can get out of the vehicle um, to make the world's most efficient car. And uh, that is just something that's, it's not been done in any other company that I've been a part of before. And I'm just really excited to be a part of that. One of the great things that we're doing right now is uh, implementing electric power assisted steering. And for that, it's gonna be a key player in us enabling autonomous driving for the Aptera. So one of the things that's gonna make the vehicle respond and behave the way you would expect it to as, as any other car, it's gonna have a proper steering feel to it. You won't have to be applying an a exorbitant amount of force to get the wheel to turn. And uh, autonomous driving is gonna be one of our biggest points in the future and the electric power steering is gonna be a huge player in us doing that. So I'm, I'm Charlie Bulkley. I'm a team lead here at Aptera. Uh, our area is body controls. The body controls take in sensor input, take in user input, and as appropriate, control the vehicle. Not the, not the propulsion, not the motors, but things like lights, turn signals, rear hatch. Most important part of my job is designing the body control systems to be reliable, to be simple, to be cost effective. If I do my job right, you won't notice them. Ideally, and this is where we're trying to go with this vehicle, is for things to work just like you think they should. Things that can be automated will be automated. You won't need to interact. If it's dark out, the lights will come on. If it's raining, the wipers will come on and you'll have ways to control that. But for the most part, you, will, you won't have to. You won't have to think about it. You'll just, you'll just drive your vehicle. So one thing we're doing with the, the latest vehicles is moving towards a point of use controller model where rather than having a central control unit with a lot of IO, a lot of wires running to everything in the vehicle, instead what we do is we'll have a, a simpler controller in the middle of the vehicle, in the center of the vehicle. And small point of use controllers, small circuits uh, dispersed through the vehicle near, where the, near the things that they sense, near the things that they control. And rather than having thick bundles of wire running throughout the vehicle, we'll have thin, simple data buses, data and power buses running daisy chained to these things, to these controllers. Um, makes the vehicle lighter, makes it simpler, makes it more reliable. In every decision we make, you know, we're biased towards efficiency. We're biased towards low energy use. We're biased towards lightweight. And you know, when all the little decisions are made in that way, then the vehicle winds up being what we expect it to be. What makes it unique for me is that we're doing something to change the world for the better. We designed this vehicle to be the most efficient one in the world. It has less drag than any other EV on the market, and that's what enables it to go up to 1,000 miles. Aptera has three wheels, and the motors are actually in the wheel. This gives us greater control and stability. Wheel motors are very durable. They've been tested in mud, snow, ice, sand, and they offer great longevity and long-term performance. This vehicle here, Soul, is a front-wheel drive vehicle. It has a motor in each of the front wheels, two-wheel drive. Uh, it is fast enough to do zero to 60 in about five and a half seconds. Our other vehicle, Alpha One Noir, is an all-wheel drive with a motor in every wheel, and it does zero to 60 in about three and a half seconds. One of the interesting things about Aptera is that it's a solar electric vehicle. It has solar panels on the hood, the dash, the roof, and the rear, and it produces a peak power of about 700 watts. Over the period of a day, that's enough to drive people over 40 miles. I think 46 miles in some locations. Uh, that's one of the, the key differentiators of Aptera and versus a regular vehicle, electric vehicle. Another key differentiator in the Aptera solar electric vehicle is its composite body structure. It's lighter and stronger than steel and very durable. One of the things people ask about a lot is the interior. As you can see, it's actually 
quite roomy on the inside. Most people are not expecting that. They're expecting a small space, but this is, this is quite comfortable and quite large. One of the changes that we're doing for Beta is we're moving this whole section out about 50 millimeters, about two inches. And we're dropping the seat another inch, inch and a half, and the structure below it as well. So that's gonna be easier to get in and out, but it's also gonna give tall guys and gals a lot more headroom and a lot more comfort. The Aptera has a lot of cargo space. In production, there's a small flap that connects here in the seat and extends the floor. So when you're camping, you can really stretch out uh, a long distance. There's also enough room to put your band equipment, groceries, or anything else for that matter, maybe a golden doodle. Another interesting feature in the Aptera is the energy tipster part of the UI, which lets you decide what things you want to turn on and off to increase your range. For example, I could turn off seat heating and go another 15 miles and you see the radius expand. You could turn off the fans and go another 10 miles or full regen and go another 20 miles. Each time you can dynamically see how the vehicle's range increases. One more thing about the interior of the, of the Aptera is the cooling system. It's not actually in the interior, but it's just below us in the belly pan. It's a radiator, but it's on the skin. So as air flows over the belly of the Aptera, it removes all of the heat versus a regular radiator where the air flows through it. So that means it's lighter weight and lower drag and more efficient, which gives us more miles range. The future is now.